Alright, kind of fake him out a little bit. There you go, Nautilus. And they're all like, oh man, look at me. I'm all like deep and stuff, and I got this Nautilus. This is so cool. And I'm like, you know what's really cool? Being frozen. They shall meet their frozen tomb. And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some buried timelines. We're going to be playing a concurrent timelines deck with Trundle as our champion because Trundle makes that ice pillar. And as, as y'all know, ice pillar plus concurrent timelines is just incredible because the first time that you play a follower each round, which the ice pillar will be our first follower, we get to pick one of three followers with the same cost to transform it into. So we get a random, well, three random followers with the same cost. We choose one of them. And so we're gonna get a random eight cost follower, but then you still get your play effects because you're still playing the this one from your hand. So we will still get the refill eight spell mana and also the vulnerable thing. Um, so that's just, or eight, not spell mana, but regular mana. So we just get basically zero mana, eight cost followers. Pretty amazing combo. Not our only combo in our deck, though. We're also going to have It That Stairs plus Buried in Ice combo. Another really powerful combo. So we're going to use, like, Buried in Ice, like, on, on my opponent's round to obliterate all of their enemies. And each one will be a Frozen Tomb instead. And then we're going to play It That Stairs and obliterate all landmarks. So we're going to just destroy all of our opponent's uh you know, units basically, because we turn them all into landmarks and then blow them up. So that's a really cool combo of like <laughs> one-sided ruination. Plus we'll get an awesome, you know, eight cost fo follower at that point as well. So to be able to help us find the combo, we got two Babbling Bjergs. They will draw it that stairs. So that will be half of our combo. Then we just only have to draw the buried and ice part. And we can also kind of find that with some prediction. We're gonna have Practical Perfectionist, Time Trick, both of those doing some predicting to help find our, our combo or find our trundle or anything like that. Um, Fallen Feline, get those Hexite Crystals. They're really powerful. Get those into the deck. Um, and that's kind of it. You know, like that's going to, we're just going to be a control deck trying to finish up with um, the concurrent timelines trundle combo and the It That Stairs Buried in Ice combo. So let's get to it. Let's try it out. We got Buried Timelines. We'll go play five games. Oh yeah, that's true. If we play against somebody who's playing Imagine Possibilities, they can <laughs> they can like count down. Like if we bury and ice their stuff, then they use that to count it down. All right. Well, I kind of want to just keep both parts of this combo. So we're going to be playing against Poros. It's possible we die way too fast. We don't get to do this, but I feel like this combo is going to be amazing against Poros if we don't die right away. So I think it's either we die right away or they build up like a big Poro board and like buff out their Poros and everything and then we're like, boom, blow them up. So one of those two things is going to happen. My past flashes. Ah! But both Hexite Crystal and Kindly Tavern Keeper are good early cards to keep. So they immediately passed priority, and <clears throat> after I played my one drop, then they went for the Daring Poros. So that wasn't their plan originally, to go for Daring Poro. Alright, I'm going to make some more time tricks. Could have taken Static Shock, but I'm not confident that Static Shock will kill stuff because, oh, yeah, I think that they have Poro Snacks right here. Usually, that's just save mana for Poro Snacks. Gotta find more stuff. Mm. Okay, or they're saving mana for that. That's gonna 
B, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, so they gotta play something this round. Which they certainly can. Always chasing after this one. <laughs> I don't really want to just trade with the 2-3. I don't think that's a good trade. So I can play this Buried in Ice on round 7 and then hit that Stairs on round 8. Man, I kind of want to take the Trundle. Electro rig? Now nah, I'm just taking four So the problem with playing the trundle right here, I guess, and probably maybe the reason why I shouldn't is because now I don't have the. Yeah, I guess maybe I shouldn't have because I don't have the. Ability to play buried in ice now this next round. I kind of got um, Man scout elusive that's like the best one they could hit anyway, I Kind of got distracted by the flashy new champion of you know, like play this but I am kind of regretting that right now so I don't get I'll have eight mana one short What, they're not scout attacking? And then they just had another elusive? They could've just scout attacked and then played that? This is all a surprise. Alright, they got a spell shield. Let's go with the Dreadway. I know, the attack give my enemies minus two, minus zero is not bad either. Both of these are pretty awesome. Man, Ice Pillar plus Concurrent Timelines is crazy. We'll go Dreadway. <laughs> 56 Chicken Wing says, oh, this kid's in for a surprise. <laughs> the old round eight, play the Dreadway, and also buried in ice all your stuff. Except for the spell shield. I guess I could have blown up the, spe the spell shield with the troll chant. Yeah, I should have blown up that spell shield. I think we're going to be just fine, though. Alright, yep, pretty lethal. GG's. Dude, Buried in Ice is sweet. Alright, playing against some deep. No Maokai. Just Nautilus. Cool. Buried in Ice is really underrated. People don't realize how good this card is. I really like these Heimer sleeves, though. This Heimer card back. Alright, I could trade those. But I'd rather the Dredgers trade with the Sentry, of course, so we get to draw a card. Good fading memories. Extra copies of Dredge Dredgers is all that you want in that attack. Nothing 
Nothing escapes my watch. Wow, Scrabosaros with that man. What a perfect hand. Perfect start. Like this is what you dream of. Both fading memories and Scrabosaros doing. That is the dream. Yep, the deck list is on Mobilytics. Just do exclamation point deck, and that's where you can find it right there. If you want to see all of the decks, you know, you can click on my username there, or just plural decks. Hmm. So we have two pieces each of the combo. I'm gonna just skip. I don't want to take a. I don't want, basically because this is kind of a problem with perfectionists. I don't want to put more buried in ice right now with having both of these. I mean, obviously I don't need another buried ice, but even concurrent timelines. If I choose concurrent timelines, we draw it next round, but then we put a bunch more concurrent timelines in the deck, and I don't really want more concurrent timelines in the deck. The first one is really good with the ice pillar, right? Like it's great, it's perfect. But right now, we don't really have a hand that is really enabling. Okay, well, there's the trundle for that ice pillar. The trolls are going to war! They know about the Hexite Crystal in hand, so they should... Never mind. I was going to say they're probably going to be passing, but I guess they just do that. Um... They easily just block with the 2-1, but, I mean, I guess it just kills a 2-1. There's no reason not to attack, I don't think. Again, with, with our deck, we want to just keep setting up our board. We don't want to trade things off. Man, they got another Dredge Dredgers. Oh, that's the one from Scrabosaurus. Oh, the other Scrabosaurus. Yeah, they've just had millions of Dredge Dredgers. They are definitely a complete Dredge Dredgers deck, right? For having Fading Memories and Scrabosaurus. We want to keep on, you know, having a whole bunch of stuff in play so that whenever we bury an ice, we can attack for a whole bunch of damage, as we saw. Yeah, they are a great dredge stretchers deck. See, now I would like that concurrent timelines. Now that we have the ice pillar. Just kind of playing that card. Kind of assuming they're going to Nautilus this round. Alright, kind of fake them out a little bit. They go Nautilus. And they're all like, oh man, look at me, I'm all like deep and stuff, and I got this Nautilus, this is so cool. And I'm like, you know what's really cool? Being frozen. They shall meet their frozen tomb. And now next round, we may destroy some landmarks. Hope they don't have Ruination. But even if they do... We'll be okay. <laughs> that's so mean. Oh, that's so mean. We 
we can kind of do that again. We'll, we'll be fine. All right. They had so many cool sea monsters until they were obliterated. Jinx Vi. That's why playing normal sometimes is fun. You get to just experience some different decks than what you see on the ladder all the time. Actually, let's keep that Flash Freeze. Flash Freeze is good against both champions. Especially Jinx. But now we just drew our other Flash Freeze. Oh, end round. Hello. These old eyes still see far and clear. Easy there. Yeah, I think this could be competitive. I don't think it will be like a top tier deck, but I think you could do just fine and ranked with this. Enter, traveler, and stop staring. Um, Mystic Shot, Avalanche, Avalanche. A little late. Go, floating crystals. Let the villain. Match of the stone is a really cool card. All right, gonna clear clear that up. So they have six cards in hand, plus three gems, and we have seven cards, and they have an extra three mana. The gems plus Jinx is a little bit of a weird combo, because you're like, you know, how, how do I even do my hand to level up Jinx if I get, get all these gems? But you can just think, alright, well my, my Jinx is going to have a bunch of gems, that's also cool. I expect them to want to trade. Jinxes get excited. Jinxes get excited. I think somebody has too many Jinxes on their hand. So what do they discard? I guess we don't know. They discarded Zonite Urchin and Zonite Urchin. Come on in. Okay, Nasha, have a good day at work. Thanks for hanging out on the stream today. Here comes the punchline. All right, so first of all, is that seven out of ten? Let's just pass, I guess. But yeah, you're right there, Jump Row. Like, there's always going to be a best deck, right? And, you know, like, sure, it's like a really easier before and stuff, but there's always going to be something that's known as best deck. I got another Trundle in hand. I really want to get rid of the Jinx, because leveled up Jinx is the scariest thing, for sure. Oh, wow. Rising Spell Force, eh? Alright, so the Avalanche kills the Vi, does two damage to Jinx, then hopefully the Mystic Shot will finish off Jinx next round. I 
know I could play the Ice Pillar. I'm gonna just wait on that. Mystical levitation requires concentration. All right, so we're at nine for Sub Percival. We've already played Ice Pillar, Kindly Tavern Keeper, and Ice Pillar. Vi stands for vicious. Gross. My opponent does a really good job of drawing champions. Played five champions so far. Hmm. Oh, I haven't played Ice Pillar yet. I said that I had, but I hadn't, so that's gonna make that ten. Okay, cool. Another fallen feline. Hmm. No, no, no. What was the other card they discarded? It was like, was it two get excited? It went so fast. I kind of felt it. I kind of felt like it was two get excited. What, Sumpworks map that thing? So you can block five fives? That makes sense. Just out of hmm. Okay. Alright, I guess that will do. We'll take that win, and we're moving on at 3 and 0. Oh. Stranger game. All in Fiora. Okay, this is going to be one where we're going to need our Buried and Ice combo for sure. All right, we got Buried and Ice. Static Shock. I actually kind of like this hand. Yeah, I kind of like this. I think I'm going to keep this. So basically, Static Shock blows up a barrier. Dole Chant, you know, makes it harder for them to kill stuff. My plans. You don't want to play too many early units. I'm kind of planning on just, like, Feline and Perfectionist. Oh, there we go. We found our combo. Right, because I don't want to play four units and let them kill four things to win with Fiora, right? So, like, you don't play four things, they can't. So we got to... We can give him a couple of things. We gotta have this buried nice combo on Strength lock. And grace, beauty in the blade. Beauty in the blade. All right, let's let's see what they're working with. I'm gonna skip. I never try me. Okay, so traded Troll Chant for Brittle Steel. Just want to keep slowing them down, keep making it more difficult to kill my units. And, you yeah, know, eventually they will kill these two. But we'll use Barry and I sit that stairs. I don't need this fallen feline right now. I want to put out a third unit, I don't think. Nothing to hold me back. Strike quickly, strike deftly. Okay, maybe perfectionist for a third unit. Yeah, like Spell Shield counters it. Yeah, Recall counters it. Um, just playing like Deny. You know, like Sharima has 
Shreem and Ionia have like deny. That's good against Barry Denies. Mind once round eight happens if we're basically playing it that stairs each round. So they will level up Fiora, but a new Fiora, whenever a new Fiora comes in, they got the second Fiora. Whenever the second Fiora comes in, even though it's leveled up, it still has to kill four things. So, of course, the more spells they use like this, like the more cards they use like this, the better. I have no equal. So now the fourth card is Fiora. Strike quickly, strike me. Yeah, I love that they're just like using all these cards. That was that was fun while it lasted Fiora. Go ahead and take your frozen tomb. They're <laughs> looking at it like they're considered strikes, I guess, or fight spells or something. They're protection spells. None of those will protect against them. So are they going to play new Fiora right now? No, it will not reset the kill count on this one. Because whenever this comes back, it comes back as an exact copy. But I am going to use... So that's why I'm going to have the hit that stairs kill that. Oh, yes. We drew another... Obliterate all landmarks. We drew another Barry and Ice. We got Barry and Ice hit that stairs combo for the second Fiora. So that Fiora's gone. So now... They're going to have to kill four things again with the next Fiora. <laughs> yeah, we got this. We about to be four and oh. I, long for a I don't know much about Casanova, but I do know this one's over. Probably no reason to attack. They can just repose, pump spell, block. Just no re real reason to attack there. Let them eat souls. Oh God. Okay. And they just keep using cards, I'm, and I'm happy with it. Yep. Perfectly fine with me. Alright, so they got one kill on this Fiora. And I don't have to do this at that stairs, very nice combo until they get some more kills. So I can make them, again, waste more cards. Alright, so I'm going to play this. Get the Hexite Crystal in my deck. Now kill this so they don't get to kill it. <laughs> don't let them kill it. And I want to get that Hexite Crystal in my deck because we're, I'm going to shuffle the deck with the Babbling Beard. Or, I guess maybe that doesn't shuffle the deck. I was thinking that like it would draw one and shuffle, but I guess maybe it doesn't shuffle. Concurrent Timelines is kind of cool. Yeah, let's go. I'm in there. We're going to be turning these 8-8s into other things, and maybe they're smaller, and maybe that's going to mean it's going to be easier for Fiora. Uh, 
Oh, man. All right, well, they can only have three Fioras, so now, now that I have two separate other combos, I can just combo each one. I'll start with the Avalanche first. Make them waste a card. And then I'll go very nice, because I still got my non-mana. Yeah, poor opponent. Poor Fiora is just buried. Like, Fiora is just going to be buried under so much ice. We did use Practical Perfectionist to make more It That Stairs in our deck, and we did use Babbling Beer to draw in It That Stairs. But we were pretty lucky of just, you know, naturally drawing three Buried in Ice. We naturally drew those. Uh, Leviathan's pretty cool. Man, Leviathan also kills Fiora. That's such a cool animation. Always two steps ahead. I don't really want to attack. I don't want to kill them yet. I want to keep comboing. Don't concede opponent. I shouldn't have grabbed Leviathan. Leviathan kills them too fast. I hope they have Repost plus Sharp Sight. I guess I could just single con or I could static shock though. I will cut you down. Alright, there's sharp sight. Elixir of iron. <laughs> oh, that may get them to concede. I hope not. Uh, no. This will be quick. Everything I've worked for. All right, so not sure how they're gonna win now. I guess all three Fioras are gone. Uh, let's get. Those guys. Wasn't me. Alright, that'll do. We are 4 and 0 oh with buried timelines. Dude, people are sleeping on this combo, I'm telling y'all. What's up, Viper? Buried in ice, hit that stairs. Crazy good combo. So y'all know what this is. Whenever we are 4 and 0 oh with our meme tier deck, that means we go take it on over to ranked for game number 5 to try to finish out the 5-0. Being 4-0 in normal means it's probably too good for normal. So let's head on over to ranked and let's see how we do with buried timelines. Alright, we got some lurkers. Lurkers could... Yeah, like, they could go wide and be pretty vulnerable to our combo if we can pull it off. Flash Freeze is good against the Lurkers. Do I just want to keep Tavern Keeper, Tavern Keeper, Flash Freeze? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could keep it that stairs, but we got to find Buried in Ice. But if we do find Buried in Ice... Like, this is not necessarily a bad hand. Yeah, I mean, I guess this is not really a bad hand. We gotta draw Buried in Ice for the Hit That Stairs to do anything, but we're pretty good at doing that. Yeah, meme tier day is the day you don't have to worry about LP, just having fun. Alright. They got pretty lucky they hit Lurk after the call to pack. <laughs> Okay, maybe not as lucky. Take 
Very good possibility that I will regret using that uh, spell right then. But we do kind of need to, you know, stay on the board and everything. That stairs below Preservarium. Alright, you're 3 out of 10, so yeah, you're forever away. Um, I think I may just still play Subpersible. No, I'll go ahead and just attack. Attack. Mago time trick plus thermo beam. Bjerg would give me a second at that stairs. So that sounds good. So therefore, whenever we draw the second Verity Nice, right here, or later, Avalanche. Dot's got nothing on me. Oh, Avalanche kind of punishes me a little bit. It was right on my tail. I smell panic. Hope they don't have um, Pike's champion spell that would put Pike back on top. But let's see what we got. Cool. That's good. Oh no, it's even worse. Even worse. Funny who you remember. This list just keeps getting stronger. Pike's still really, really good. All right, we get to get rid of those three at least. Okay, cool. Now we need another one of those Buried and Ice. Oh, I thought that was it. I really did. I thought that was Buried and Ice. 8 out of 10 for Subpersible. Too bad them having that card. Zerzaret's gonna have overwhelm. Gosh, that thing has overwhelm. All right, I guess I just have to play Subversible, don't I? No, no, no! Yeah, this is looking over. 
I think it's over too. Unfortunately, ooh. Unfortunately, the pike. Unless frostbite. No, not frostbite. Frostbite. Okay. Here we go. Pike. Frostbite. I needed to troll chant this thing before they attack. I guess I couldn't because they had priority first. I couldn't troll chant that before they attacked. That's still 19 overwhelm. Yeah, barely. Close. Negative one. So close. <laughs> they just get the third death from below. A third bike. See, I'm telling you. We'll... I don't understand how my opponents get so many death from belows. <laughs> it's frequently always so many death from belows. Remember... Every time I played Pike, we'll see how this, you know, we got Pike deck later on, but every time we played Pike, like out of five game sets, I've gotten like one total death from below in five games, but my opponents always have multiple death from belows every game. All right, well, that's how it is in ranked sometimes. Sometimes your opponent just has all the Pikes and all the death from belows, but I needed I needed one more Barry and Ice, right? Like we had to do the Barry and Ice combo twice. We only got to do it once. I also used some removal spells a little too eagerly early on in those games. I think I had to hold my thermogenic beam, especially how they played like the pike. Like right after I played thermogenic beam, they played pike. And so I got really punished for that. I was worried about the fearsome attacker. Um, but then, but then also, so like they have like the, the one mana fearsome, I thermogenic beam it. They immediately afterwards play pike, which I wish I had my thermogenic beam. And I also immediately after draw avalanche, which would have just killed that thing also. So like the thermogenic beam was like the play that really cost me that game. All right, but there we go. That was a really fun deck with buried timelines. And um, yeah, I am a, I'm a pretty bad pike player. I don't, I don't get death from below ever. So I'm a pretty bad pike player. For, that's for sure. I'm a bad lurker player. Uh, but yeah, so buried timelines was really cool. Um, this it that stairs buried nice combo was awesome. We got to do some cool stuff with trundle concurrent timelines as well. Uh, the predict really helped uh, be able to you know find the different combo pieces. We had it that stairs a lot from you know having it and then also babbling Bjerg drawing it, and then you know we just had to find it that, or then we had to find the buried nice and you know we have our predicts and stuff like that to help find it and just extra card draw. So it all worked very well, um, and I think that keeping it that stairs and buried nice in our opening hands did pretty good for us because we played some slower matchups, and so that was definitely worth it. Fun deck to play. Fun deck to play. Um, it's not going to be like one of the very best decks, but I definitely think it's a it's a very respectable deck that you can play in ranked. I know we we did here in normal with these games, but I think it can hold its own in ranked as well. All right, but that's going to be it here for buried timelines. So those y'all watching later on YouTube. Hit that like button over there, and feel free to leave those comments. If you if you are trying it out in ranked, let me know how it's going for you. Any card uh, changes that you, uh, you think would help the deck, you know, anything like that, those comments are always welcome. But thank you so much for watching some buried timelines, and I'll see you for the next video.